All right, so uh, we're going to look at calculating energies for symmetry adapted linear combinations. All right, so this is out of <coughs> out of our next chapter, chapter seven, um, where we're trying to uh, look at the energies of molecular orbitals. So this is an example that's in your textbook, but I thought we'd just walk through it uh, just so that we can. Uh, see how this math works. It's actually simpler than cotton makes it sound. Uh, but we're going to work with this molecule where I've numbered the carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so those are the numbers for the carbons. What we want to do is generate uh, molecular orbitals for the pi bonding. So the p orbitals make pi bonds. And we want uh, to construct symmetry adapted linear combinations for these p orbitals that are on each of these carbon atoms. Okay, so each of these carbon atoms is sp2 hybridized, and so we should uh, be able to arrive at uh, linear combinations. I'm actually not going to walk through the entire uh, construction of the SALCs because uh, you guys are already familiar with that, but. Um, we have two groups of carbons and the character for the outer group um, it, it reduces to the A2U, the B1U, and the EG representations in, and this is for the D4H symmetry group. Um, this also equals the character for the inner carbons. Okay, so whatever symmetry adapted linear combinations we get for the uh, outer carbons is going to be the same for the inner carbons. All right, so you guys know how to do this. Um, I'm going to list out some of these. These are also listed in your textbook. Um, I'm going to drop these subscripts 2U and 1U and G because we have some A representation, some B representation, and some C representation. So I'm just going to drop those from, <coughs> from our notation. Uh, and I'm going to use subscripts I for inner carbons. So that's carbons 2, 3, 6, and 7. And I'll use O for outer carbons. Okay, so if we generate normalized SALCs uh, we get these linear combinations alright, oops sorry this is 8 <coughs> okay and we can also do the same thing for the B representation and we would get these so we'd have those we can also generate linear combinations for the E representations. I'm actually just going to work with the A and B for right now because I think we can explain everything we need from this molecule just with these two symmetry adapted linear combinations. Okay, so now what we need to do is to construct a determinant for each type of representation. So we have an A, we have both of these belong to the A2U representation, and both of these belong to the B1U representation. And so the stuff that we talked about last week sort of walks, walks you through the fact that we can um, uh, block the matrix according to these symmetry groups, or these symmetry uh, uh, representations of this group. And we can work just with 
say the A2U representations or just with the B1U uh, linear combinations. Okay, so what we want to do is to construct a determinant for each of these. Okay, so So let's do that for just the A2U representation right now. So our determinant is going to look like this. Okay, where I'm going to have, I'm just going to go ahead and label here the rows of the determinant just so that you can see how we want to uh, sketch out these integrals. Okay, so we have the integral HII here, the integral H. Uh, I O here, the integral H O I here, and the integral H O O here. So this just gets the row and the column. Okay. Now along the diagonal, we also subtract E. So this is the determinant for this uh, for this representation. All right. So we need to work out these integrals. And I'm going to show you how to work out the integrals. So HII is this integral right here. We have um, the integral of psi i h hat psi i d tau. So this is the integral that we need. Okay. Now remember, we're just working with the A2U representation. So I'm going to pull the linear combinations for that just for the inner. So I have, if I factor out my 1 over halves, I have 1 quarter integral of, and then I have my linear combination. Then my Hamiltonian operator, and then the linear combination again. And again, this one quarter comes from the fact that we have the normalization factor one half for both of these. So when I multiply those and I factor it out of the integral, I'm left with one quarter. <coughs> okay, now notice that, um, so uh, quantum mechanical operators are linear operators, so we can distribute this in, and then we can distribute all of these into there. So we're gonna have, for each one of these on the left side, phi 2. I'm going to have four different integrals. I'll have phi 2, h hat, phi 2, phi 2, h hat, phi 3, phi 2, h hat, phi 6, phi 2, h hat, phi 7. All right, so I have four integrals for each of these. So I'm going to have a total of 16 terms or 16 integrals that I need to evaluate. Now we're going to, uh, there's, there's two types of integrals. Actually, uh, we'll actually make three types of integrals. One of the types is where I have the same atomic orbital, so phi 2 and phi 2, or phi 3 and phi 3. Okay, Those I'm going to abbreviate as alpha. So alpha is going to, alpha is going to equal the integral of phi i h hat phi i d tau. Okay. And then we're going to um, have another abbreviation, which is beta. Okay. Beta is going to be equal to phi i h hat phi j, where phi i and phi j are, are adjacent orbit, atomic orbitals. That is, they're on atoms that are bonded to each other. Okay. So let's look at doing that. Okay. So H I I is going to equal. Okay. I'm going to have one fourth. Keep my one fourth. 
Okay, now let's look at the integral. I have the first one is going to be phi2 h hat phi2. So that's going to give me this alpha integral. Okay. Second integral is phi2 h hat phi3. Well, the question here that we have to address is whether or not phi2 and phi3 are on adjacent carbons. And if I go back up here, carbons 2 and 3 are adjacent to one another. So that's going to be a beta integral. So plus beta. Right. The next one is phi2 h hat phi6. Well, again, the question is, are 2 and 6 adjacent? And in this case, 2 and 6 are opposite carbons. They're not bonded to one another. So that integral is 0. That's the Huckel approximation that we're applying. Okay. And the next one, phi2 h hat phi7. Well, are 2 and 7 on adjacent carbons? They are. 2 and 7 are on adjacent carbons. So that one is also going to be beta. So all of that is from just this phi2, this term right here. Now I need to do the same thing for phi3. Now hopefully you'll see that the symmetry of the molecule shows us that these four terms are going to be the same. So if I start with phi2 or phi3 or phi6 or phi7, they're all going to be give you the same integrals. In other words, I'm going to have phi3 h hat phi3. So that one is the alpha integral. And then two of these, phi3, phi2, phi3, phi6, are going to be the beta type of integrals. And then one of them is going to be zero according to the Huckel approximation. So I'm actually going to have four of these, alpha plus beta plus beta. So multiply that by four. And this gives me alpha plus 2 beta. Okay. So that's that integral right there. That's the first one, which is the HII integral. All right. We have two more types. We got the mixed one, HOI and HII. Those are equal. And then HOO. Right. So let's look at Let's look at the mixed integral next. Okay, so we have H O I is going to be equal to H I O. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter the order that we um, have these inner and outer uh, orbitals in. These are going to be equal. And so in that case, I'm going to have, I'm, I can factor out my one halves again uh, to give me one fourth. Okay, and I'm going to have the integral of, all right, and in this case, I have phi2 plus phi3 plus phi6 plus phi7 h hat, and then phi1 plus phi4 plus phi5 plus phi8. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the uh, inner here and the outer here. Now hopefully you can see that since none of these on the inside are on the same carbon ends as those on the outside, we're not going to have any of the alpha type integrals here. We're only going to have beta type integrals. And we're only going to have beta type integrals when the outer carbon is bonded to the inner carbon. So I'm going to have a beta integral for the carbons 1 and 2, a beta integral for carbons 3 and 4, a beta integral for 5 and 6, and one for 7 and 8. Okay. So this is going to be 1 fourth times, okay, how many of those am I going to have? I'm going to have four of them, right? One and two, that's going to be a beta integral. Three and four, that's going to be a beta integral. Five and six, seven and eight, all of those are going to be beta integrals. 
So this is going to equal beta. All right. Now the last type of integral is the HOO integral. Okay. So this is the outer ones. So I'm going to go outer. Okay, so in this case, I have one fourth times the integral of v1 plus v4 plus v5 plus v8, and the same thing. Now, this integral is actually relatively simple to work out, also. Because if we look back at the molecule, notice that 1, 4, 5, and 8 are all not bonded to one another. Okay, So they're, they're bonded to the inner carbons. So I'm not going to have any of the beta type integrals because these aren't bonded to each other. So instead, I'm only going to have the alpha integrals. And I'm only going to have the alpha integrals when I have the same orbital, v1, v1, v4, h hat, v4, v5, h hat, v5, v8, h hat, v8. So this integral is going to equal 1 fourth times. I'm going to have four of those alpha type integrals. So h0, 0 is going to equal alpha. Okay. Now, this next part might be a little bit confusing, but anytime we're dealing with energy, we always have to refer to some zero point of energy. Um, so, for example, in uh, general chemistry, when you guys uh, learned about enthalpies of formation, uh, we use the standard state of elements as the zero point. It's just sort of an arbitrary decision that we've made. So we can arbitrarily choose alpha to be our zero point. In other words, this alpha energy is zero. So this makes things a little bit nice because all those alpha terms just disappeared. And the reason why we do this is because the alpha integral, let's go back up here to the alpha integral, is the energy of the atomic orbital. Okay, so remember this is how we can calculate average energies. And so if I have an atomic orbital on the ith atom and have the Hamiltonian operator and an atomic orbital on the ith atom, this gives me the energy for just that atomic orbital. So when we build these molecular orbital diagrams, uh, we're looking at how is the energy, what is the energy with respect to just the atomic orbitals. Okay. So we let that equal zero. And then the other thing is, is that we let, we, we take our units of energy as beta. In other words, beta just equals one. Okay. So that way we can just sort of count. So we're not putting this on an absolute scale. We're putting this on a beta scale, all right? Which is just whatever beta is, so we have, we're referring to this energy, alpha, which is our zero point, and then we're using increments of beta. So each increment would be one. All right, so then if we go back up here to our determinant, okay, we have HII, which is zero plus two. So this is just two minus E, HI zero, and that one was one. H zero H O I, which is one, and then H O O, which was alpha is zero. So this is just negative e. So this is our determinant that we have to solve. So we're looking for the energies, and this is in terms of beta. So now that we have that, we can evaluate this determinant. So the determinant is easy to evaluate. You have to take the product of the diagonals here, two minus E times negative E. And 
and then you want to subtract the product of the other diagonal minus one okay and so this gives me a quadratic equation in terms of uh, uh, for e so I would have e squared minus 2e minus 1 equals 0 and then I want to solve this for e and so solving this for e gives me two roots I can have uh, e is 1 plus square root of 2 or 1 minus square root of 2 so those are the two roots for this so I have two energies I have 1 plus the square root of 2 and 1 minus the square root of 2 okay all right let's look at the um, the B type integrals okay so we're going to go back to these or uh, the B 1u symmetry adapted linear combinations that is these two right here let's build those or, or determine those energies and, and set up the matrix just like we did before and we're going to have oh, sorry set up the uh, determinant so we're going to have the same kind of determinant we're going to have the inner and the outer so it's going to look exactly like this except our integrals are going to be different because I have different linear combinations let's see how that looks So, let's do our first integral, which is h i i. So we're talking about the b 1 u symmetry adapted linear combinations now. So h i i is going to be uh, 1 fourth times the integral of, and I'm going to have my uh, linear combination. Hamiltonian operator and the linear combination again. Okay, and then we want to find out what are those integrals. Now notice we got to take care of our signs here. This is where we can get a little tripped up if we don't pay attention to our signs. Okay. All right, let's just work through each one of these. So we have phi2. So recall that uh, phi2, let me get our molecule back in here in the frame. So 2 is adjacent to 3 and 7. Okay, so we have the first integral is alpha. The second integral is negative beta. The third integral is 0 according to the Huckel approximation. The fourth integral is, again, negative beta. That's from the first one. And then we have the next one. Let's just see what happens here. We have uh, negative phi 3, h hat negative phi 3. That's, again, just alpha. We have negative phi 3 h hat phi 2, that's minus beta. We have negative phi 3 h hat uh, phi 6, that's also minus beta. And then negative phi 3 h hat phi 7, those are not bonded to each other, so that's 0. Okay, hopefully you see the pattern here. The next one, we have phi 6 h hat phi 6, which is alpha, phi 6 h hat phi 2, which is 0, phi 6 h hat negative phi 3, so it's minus beta, and phi 6 h hat negative phi 7, that's also minus beta. And we could work through the same thing here, and we'd have alpha minus beta minus beta for the last one also. So this gives us 1 fourth times 4 alpha minus 8 beta or alpha minus 2 
beta. That gives me H I I. Now we need H I zero, which equals H zero I. I'm going to do the same thing. And so this is our uh, inner carbons, and we want to put down the linear combination for our outer carbons. So that is it's that. Okay. Okay. So again. In this case, only those uh, carbons that are bonded to each other matter. Okay, so that is so when one and two are bonded together, uh, two and uh, three and four are bonded together, six and five are bonded together, seven and eight are bonded together. So I'm going to have um, all the other terms are going to be zero according to the Huckel approximation. So then I have two, one and two are bonded together. So it's going to give me alpha. Okay, all the other ones were two, all these other ones, when I uh, multi left multiplied by phi2 is going to be zero. So phi3 and phi4, those are uh, next to each other. I'm sorry, this gives me beta. Uh, beta. So phi3 and phi4, that's going to give me plus another beta. Phi5 and 6, plus another beta. And 7 and 8, that's going to give me another plus beta. So this integral is going to give me beta. Now I need the last integral, which is h0,0. Okay, and this is going to be... I have my 1, 4, 5, and 8. Orbitals. Okay, and then <coughs> I need to work through this the same way that I've worked through the other ones. Okay, so I have, again, I'm going to have four alpha terms. So I'll have phi1 h hat phi1, negative phi4 h hat negative phi4. So it's going to give me another alpha. Phi5 h hat phi5, negative phi8 h hat negative phi8. That's going to give me four alpha terms. And then we want to look at what are the beta terms. Well, Recall that we're look, working with these outer carbons, 1, 4, 5, and 8. So again, I'm not going to have any beta terms. So everything else is 0, so this integral is alpha. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before, which is um, let alpha, so we're, we have to keep with our same notation, or same, same relative um, reference point for zero energy and the same increment of energy. That is, we're using beta as our increment of energy. So we have the same kind of, the same determinant. Okay, so HII uh, up here was negative 2. HI0 is 1 and H00 is 0. So this is my determinant that I need to evaluate. So again I can evaluate this by multiplying my cross terms uh, So those two multiplied together, subtracting the diagonal equals zero. And I need to solve this for E also. And so in this case, 
e is just equal to root 2 minus 1 or negative root 2 minus 1. So those are the options. So this is for the B symmetry uh, linear combinations. Okay. So we can now start to construct a molecular orbital diagram where we look at the energies of these. And that is what your book does. I'm just going to swap over to your book really quick and take a look at this. So you can see here, they have this on the, on the Y axis, they have energies. And so we have the energy of zero. This is the alpha integral. So notice that um, when I add betas, one beta, two beta, I actually get more stable energy. Beta is inherently a negative integral. So if you actually solve the integral for beta, you get a negative number. So we put that when we add betas, we go down in energy. So we have this is from the A uh, one, uh, the A2U representation here. Okay, and we have 1 plus the square root of 2. There are two of these with the E representation. We didn't work out the E representations, um, but you can do the same thing for the E representations where the energy is beta. And then these are, this is the uh, B representation that we just did one of those roots, which is root 2 minus 1, so we just did that one. And then the A, another uh, A representation energy, which is 1 minus root 2, okay. And then the other B, this, those were the ones that we did, okay. Negative 1 minus root 2 times beta. So then we can get a relative ordering of what these molecular orbital energies are. Okay, so that's, that is what you're going to have to be able to do. So hopefully you'll have a chance to watch this before uh, we meet tomorrow. Um, I will see you then.